Hello, good afternoon. Time now for sports on the pulse. I am Muftar Nabila Abla. We have we are sharing with you an interesting story about an athlete. How well do you know Benjamin Azamati, track and field coach of West Texas A and M University? Matt Stewart has described Benjamin Azamati's improvement since the athlete joined the program as the fastest in his 11 year stay as the head coach. Azamati, who joined the Buff Nation, uh, which is affectionately known as one of the institutions that builds some of the best athletes in the country, says that he has made incredible strides in the springs. Matt Stewart has been speaking to George Adogenia of Joy Sports. Um, I wouldn't say I'm surprised. I'm just, uh, I think. I saw the talent was there, and I think maybe just how quickly he's been able to improve. Um, I think he would have gotten there eventually with the training and just the uh, talent that he has, but he's just improved so so quickly. Um, he's just bought into everything we do here as a, as a university and as a track and field program, and I think the big thing for him was just consistency in the weight room and getting stronger and more powerful in there. And it's just helped him stay healthy and it's helped him improve uh, tremendously and getting stronger and just maturing and getting better, um, just learning the races better, learning the technique better. Everything he's done, he's just a, he's a student of the sport and wants to be, wants to be one of the greatest. And uh, I think he's well on his way to doing that. Great. And he's already come down um, by striking a number of records already in uh, just a, a little time there with you. On, on, on that one, in terms of the records, uh, did you think it was going to come so soon, breaking records? Um, I think in, I think indoor, I saw that, uh, you know, he was running the 60s and 659, but he was, once he comes out of his uh, acceleration, he, I mean, he had just, I knew that if he had 40 more meters, I didn't know what was going to happen. And really the first first outdoor meet at Texas Relays, we saw saw what happened there at 997. So, I mean, he's just tremendous. Um, the coaches in Ghana, I mean, developed him well. Um, he, technically, he was very good when he got here. And all we, all we did was keep working with him and mm -hmm. help him with his uh, strength and power, like I said. But I think I didn't – I probably didn't expect – I don't think he did either. I didn't expect 997, the first outdoor meet of the year. Um, I thought we maybe could get there through a few meets, but uh, to do that was just outstanding and do it on that stage. That just shows you how he wants to rise to the big stage and do it at the biggest meets possible. Texas Relays is a huge meet in, here in the States, and a lot of the best talent from uh, all over the world is here. So he did it in front of all those people. So I think that really just put him on the map. And then his 200 just keeps getting better. So... Um, you know, I would say he was more of a 60-100 guy when he probably came here, and he probably described himself as that, 4 by one 60-100. But he's improved really well in the 200 and doing some great things there, obviously, running 20.1 this past weekend. Good stuff. Let, let, me, let me take you back to when he did run the 9.97 seconds. Now, where were you around the track, and <laughs> how did you go through that moment? I was in the, I was in the warm up area. <laughs> I was they had a TV they had a TV in there and I was watching everything in there uh, by myself because I just I didn't know what to expect and I didn't he, he would he wasn't that healthy coming off indoor nationals he was kind of beat up so I was just wanting him to get through the race healthy and then once he hit that 997 I just ran as fast as I could to the track facility and and I ran to our team area and then he came up there and then I was able to talk to him but yeah uh, sadly I didn't see it live I saw it on TV while it was going and then once I saw the 997 pop up I just sprinted out of the warm-up area and ran to the uh, track to see him so I mean I was kind of concerned because I knew he was hurting a little bit after indoor and I didn't want to know want him to get hurt or anything uh, his first outdoor meet um, that was the first time he'd run since indoor nationals so it was kind of a crazy, uh, crazy meet and a crazy way to do it, but uh, it was it was awesome to watch and awesome to see. Right, Coach, uh, you've been working with Azamati. How would you describe him? I mean, how would you describe his work ethic? How do you describe him? Well, he's a very he's a very humble, humble student, humble student athlete that we have here. I mean, he wants to get better. He's always uh, working to improve little parts of his race. I mean, as soon as he ran that 997, he was asking me what he could do to get better. So, um, 
and he was evaluating his race and watching film of his race. So he's a student of the sport and wants to continue to get better. But from what we see day to day is a guy that works hard in the classroom. He just had a 3.3 this semester, a 3.5. Um, great student. And he's a guy that just takes care of business and is there every day, works hard, trusts our training and trusts the coaches. Um, great teammate. I mean, we had an opportunity to win a conference championship as a team this past weekend, and he was ready to run the 4 by 4 if we needed him to. After he just run the 4 by one 100, 200, you know, we had him and some guys ready to run it, and he said he'd do whatever he had to do for the team to win. So he's just that kind of guy. Uh, all our teammates, all the team gets along with him, girls, guys, everyone. So um, he's a great leader for our team and a great mentor to our young guys as well. Yeah, I know you've handled a number of athletes have you handled any athlete who has developed faster than Azamati? Or this is the fastest in terms of improvement and development you have handled? Well, this is the fastest. This is the developed um, um, by far. I mean, uh, just the way he's... I mean, I think last year we, with the COVID year and everything, we just didn't get a chance to see. And I only had him in January last year. So he came at semester. Uh, so that would have been... January of 2020, he came, so I didn't get much time to work with him. So once we had a, a full summer, and he really spent a lot of time in the summer getting better and working with our strength coach, Matt Segura, who's done a great job with him. He just kept getting better, and then we had a full fall of training with him. So four or five months there, and you were, you saw it there. You saw some things that we did in testing where yeah. – 30 meter, 30 meter accelerations, 300 meter time trials. You saw some things like this guy's going to be special. And then once we got through indoor, outdoor, obviously outdoor now, we, we've seen just a rapid development and, and he's earned it and he's worked harder for it. He's, a, he's now the national 100 meters record holder in Ghana. He knocked a record of 9.98 seconds. Uh, did you watch him at the World Relay Championships? Did you watch him? What did you make of the Ghana team? Yeah, I thought it was a uh, I thought it was an outstanding relay for those guys. Just they don't get much practice time or anything, and they just kind of have to go up there and then get their handoffs together and don't get much time to work with each other and develop chemistry. So I, I think there's a lot of talent on that team, and I think they can really do something at the Olympics if they're able to work together and just get their chemistry down, their handoffs down, and I'm excited to see what they can do because there's a lot of talented guys on that on that squad. And he ran a great leg, Benjamin, second leg. I mean, he ran great both days. Unfortunately, they got disqualified, but they'll learn for, from it and get better from it and hopefully um, do well at the Olympic Games. Yeah, so how, how difficult was it for you to release um, Azamati? Because you know that you had championships, you know, there's a whole clutter there, other games ongoing, and there's national. Yeah. <laughs> national team. I mean, I, I, I yeah. imagine you had a hard time, you know, deciding whether you let him go or not. Yeah, I mean, it was a hard, it was a hard decision, but I mean, at the end of the day, I trust him and I, I want him to follow his dreams. And I'm like, who am I to say that he can't go? compete at the Olympics or have a chance to get his team to the Olympic Games, I don't want to take that opportunity from him. So I trusted him and, you know, my main concern was just getting him back healthy and really, you know, with final exams too. He had to come back Monday, do final exams all week and then didn't even practice Thursday a little bit and then had to run our conference championships this past week. So I'm sure he's pretty tired from everything. And But I trusted him and trusted the what he wanted to do with his teammates and um, I have all the confidence in him in the world uh, to take care of business from the classroom and on the track. And I was happy to see that they took care of business and got the job done and were able to qualify for the Olympics. Good stuff, Coach. So let's, uh, let's try to end it, but let's start with um, what you expect from him. Now, you know, he's run, he's perhaps in the top 10, clearly. I think um, in the, the fastest times already that's been run this year. Um, what do you expect from him, you know, naturally, where he's going to get the chance um, to do the final, you do the nationals on the 29th of May, you get a chance to go off and, and run the Olympics. When you look at the times that have been run and what he's doing, I mean, what are you expecting of him? Well, I think he can, I mean, you know, for me, I don't want to put a ceiling on him. I think he can do whatever he wants to do. <laughs> I think he's got, I think his, all his fastest times are ahead of him, honestly. I mean, he's running these times with no one by him. So I think um, once he gets into a competition where he's going to have to have some competition with him and people running with him, I think no telling how fast he can be. Um, I mean, I'm excited to see him 
at our national championships. Um, but I'm more excited. I'm definitely excited to see him at the Olympic stage and get some guys that all run 9.8, 9.9, 10 flat with him. Um, and the same thing in the 200. And I think the sky's the limit for him and no telling how fast he'll go if he's in, in that competition with those emotions going and representing his country. I think the sky's the limit for him. Good. Let's end. Let's end with talking about Texas. I mean, West West Texas. You you guys are doing a good job. We're happy to have them. Do, do you have any fond memories of some Ghanaians who passed through aside as a Mati? Well, I've got Abraham Shineke hmm. here who won the long jump yep. national championship for me. Um, my first guy from Ghana from the country of Ghana was Daniel Gayasi, hmm. who was that uh, good four hundred runner. Um, split 44 for us and ran 45 in the 46 in the uh, 400. So um, I've got Desmond Ari here. Uh, I've got some good guys. I've had some good people from great students, student athletes from Ghana that have done just great job for us and really done well after they graduated from here. So um, I've been very blessed to have all those people on our in our program and they've just been a blessing for me and all our coaches here. And, 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 and we have been so blessed that you have uh, mm. a talent like Azamati and you guys are doing your best uh, to push him out there. So um, in terms of West Texas, what are you expecting in the, in the Nationals on the, on, the, on the 29th of May? Well, I think, uh, I think we'll, the rankings will come out today and we'll be, the, we'll be ranked number two. So I think um, we, we have a chance to win a national championship. Um, we're going to have to be at our best to do it. And I think that... Uh, um, we we're really looking forward to it. We just need to make sure that we're healthy. We, we had a long weekend this past weekend. We had finals last week. So all our student athletes are pretty, pretty tired mentally and physically. And now we just got to make sure that we got them in the right direction and get them uh, back to 100% physical, mental health and ready to go for nationals. And I think they will be. It's a strong group um, led by Benjamin. He, he leads those guys in the sprint group for sure. Um, and we'll, we'll be ready and uh, represent our institution and our program the best we can and go for a national championship. Coach Steve, thank you very much for your time. Azamati, an incredible athlete, qualified for the Olympic Games as 100 meters athlete, qualified for the Olympic Games as 200 meters athlete, helped Ghana relate him to qualify for the Olympic Games. What a trajectory of career the gentleman is having. That is your sports on the pulse for now with me, Muftar Nabila Ablai. Enjoy the rest of the program. Thank you.